It wasn't until I returned to Walker's Creek that I realized I had grown afraid of the quiet. Nights after my return, I wasn't never visited by sleep on account of the silence. Weren't no night owls calling out to each other. No, weren't no restful sounds of children sleeping nearby. There weren't no footsteps moving quietly through the dark. Even Thomas, laying next to me, tried to keep as still as he could, straining his ears, holding his breath as tight as he was holding on to me. We tried to close our eyes to an empty cabin, but our ears kept us awake, listening to the silence, listening for the others to return, rifles at the ready by our bedside, one next to each of us in case they ever did. But also, we was listening for the ghosts, hoping they'd visit us again soon. That's right, this here is a ghost story, all of it, even the parts that ain't got no ghosts in them. And like most ghost stories, this one ain't easy to listen to. But unlike other stories you may have been told, this one is true. And I need to tell you my story. I need to tell you the truth so that you don't spend no sleepless nights of scared and listening to strange sounds in the darkness like me and my husband done since I come back. It's the only way I can move on. See, we've been settling on this land for, well, I reckon it's been a while now, us Wileys and Borders and Sellers and Skaggses and families with other names you might recognize if you spend enough time around these parts. We've built cabins, grown ginseng. We've closed for our children all up and down these hills, all throughout the banks of the river for generations. <laughs> I don't want to be tied to this river no more. I, I can't be. I reckon I ought to tell you why. When I think about the day the others attacked my home, it's the sounds I remember the most. Thomas had left for the trading post that morning and the air was just buzzing with noise. The creaking of the loom as I weaved winter clothing. <laughs> An old hound, he's barking at a squirrel. My brother Bat, he's chopping wood nearby. <laughs> oh, and the children, they're running around, screaming. Little, bo little baby Tommy, he's crying. He's upset from all the commotion. <laughs> A horse approaching. Hooves pounding their way fast up to my front door. John Borders gasping for air like the old hound does in the hot sun. I heard him, they's, they's coming. His horse seems like it's trying to catch his breath, same as this man riding it. It was like night owls calling out to each other, only with daylight. Lucky I escaped with my life. My brother's axe dropping to the ground, the sound of his footsteps moving quickly through the tall grass over to us. Take the children and run. Even after he's gone, I can still hear John Borders breathing heavy from fear, but, but the sound that pounds in my ears the loudest of them all. It's the baby I've got. He's growing inside me. He's, he's kicking up a storm like he knows danger is on its way. But the sun sets in the time it takes them for me to get my children ready to stay with their relations or raise with down the river. That sky was on fire when I heard a sound. It still echoes in my mind the very instant I try to drift off to sleep each night. The door to the cabin flies open. The blood red sky blazes behind those red skinned savages. That's when I first see them. The others, and then everything goes quiet. I know that they were screaming something at me and, and, and whooping the war cries. I, I know that my 15-year-old brother back called out for mercy before they slit his throat and took his scalp clean off his head, but I, I couldn't hear nothing. The blood rushed to my ears as fast and frightening as the river does when the ice melts. Even the baby inside me stopped kicking. He fell quiet. He held his breath. One of them held a knife to my throat. My children, they were made to stand on one side of the room. They were choking back tears. They were just trying to be brave for their mama. I know that they was asking me questions. The pounding of my skull had calmed down some, and I could hear the way that they were speaking. It meant that they was looking for someone, something, the truth. I reckon maybe they was looking for someone who had done them wrong, but I didn't know what they was looking for. I couldn't understand who they was looking for when I couldn't answer the charge. He took a tomahawk to my oldest son. Hezekiah. 
He was named for my father. Their sisters, his sisters had to watch their brother's scalp get torn clean off his head. It's one of the last things each of them saw. The others asked me again and again, I couldn't answer. So again, they took one of my children from me. And then a third. But when they tried to take little baby Tommy, I, I would not let them. <laughs> I tried to fight. I tried to grab my baby and just hold him close to me so that we could die together. But, but they grabbed me hard and tied my arms behind my back. And so me, my little baby Tommy, and little baby I had growing inside me, keeping real quiet so as to not be found out by those mean men who came to do us harm. We became their prisoners. Now, I ain't never been prejudiced against them others who live among these parts. I, I got plenty of love in my heart for them savages like the good Lord tells me to have, but, but we all must endure the dead of winter. We all got hardships, ain't we? My life matters, and so do the lives of my murdered children, and if they think that they's the only ones that's wrong, well, they're just plain wrong. You know, as one of fact, I'll have you know that I've got Cherokee blood in my family. I ain't ashamed of that or nothing, so, so what makes them think that they could get away with something like this? It has been long enough since our families have settled on these parts, us Wileys and Borders and Sellers and Skaggses and with the others living among our families without shame, without the fear of God. They, they've had plenty of time to get used to the way things are now since we started building up this country. So what right did they have to terrorize my family? I ask you that. What right did they have to murder... They took Tommy from me in the dead of the night while I was sleeping. How I could sleep then, I'll never know. We had been traveling for days, and the exhaustion of the journey was... See, Tommy was sick, and I was moving too slow on account of his illness, and, and they knew, they knew he couldn't keep up with us on the way through the untamed wilderness. They waited till I slept to take him from me. Whatever reason they had to want to do me wrong, I wasn't guilty of it. It wasn't me who tricked him into giving up their land. It wasn't me who poisoned him with sickness or shot him dead when they didn't do nothing to deserve it. I, I'm just a mother. I never knew nothing about what was being done to their mothers. Even if it were being done to them by members of my own family, being ignorant of something, that don't make a person guilty. Does it? I had plenty of my own to worry about, try, trying to make sure that my baby's bellies was full, that, that they was ready for the winter when it came. What well, business was mine, the injustice other people suffered. It's not like me knowing about it was going to make their suffering matter. And it's not like my children's murder was going to change the way us folks on Walker's Creek saw them and we saw them for what they were. Unfit for life among the rest of us. I was kept prisoner a long time. All throughout the fall and after the thaw and longer and when that hard ground froze. And the river became heavy with ice. I gave birth to that child I had growing inside me. The one who kept quiet since the day the others came and murdered his brothers and sisters. My child came into this world on the cold floor of a cave. And he left it with the icy kiss of a river on his cheek. 
from what I understand, all the children in the tribe are given a test soon after they're born to see if they can be a warrior. So my child was placed on a raft and put out into the river. And if he kept quiet, they knew he had a brave heart and could be one of us, a member of the tribe. And when I heard that, I knew that my child had hushed up for a reason the night he heard the door of the cabin getting broken in. See, the Lord was telling him, you keep still, son. Don't you cry. Your mama's going to need you to grow up and just be a big, strong man and look out for her. Well, they placed him on the raft, hardly no bigger than he was. And once again, it was like everything went quiet. Even the river seemed to hush up so it wouldn't make no noise and wake my sleeping babe. My child was quiet. Do you know why I'm so afraid of the quiet? It's because now I know that there's always something awful about to happen on the other end of silence. There's always a door about to get kicked in. So was a baby about to start screaming. And they drowned him for crying out when he should have stayed quiet. And it is his tears that flow through these hills now, and, and mine too, and, and all the mothers who have lost their children to these hills, all the broken, all the lost, all those who have been killed because they've been born one way instead of another. All the children's tears, ours... And the others, too, I suppose. And we keep doing the same thing to each other. We keep drinking the waters of revenge from a river of tears. That's, that's why none of us have ever left this place. That's why the ghosts of my children will never sleep. Same as their father and me won't. They done help me escape, though. <laughs> The ghosts of my children. I, I couldn't see them, but I could hear them calling out to me, telling me which way to go when I finally got free and just ran as far and fast as I could through that forest. This way, I heard from across the creek. Just a little further, Hezekiah said, when I thought I couldn't go no more. Stay strong for us, Mama. And, and word is news of my return. It made it as far out as Johnson County. Ask anyone traveling along, along these hills, they'll tell you the same thing. Miss Wiley came back. Miss Wiley came back. And since then, I try to keep talking to kind folks such as yourselves as much as I can. I try to fill the silence. You know, people ask me all sorts of questions about them others. They ask, um... If, if I pray for their salvation, I do. This story is my prayer. I pray that one day the fighting in these hills will come to an end. That day has not come yet. People have a way of killing each other over the strangest reasons. Stolen hogs, family names, colors of people's skin. It takes hundreds of years of telling the same story before we realize how silly it all sounds. But I keep on praying. I'm greeted only by that same terrifying silence that keeps me up at night. I reckon it might take a little more than praying to stop this river from overflowing with more tears. I reckon it might do us some good to be kind to one another to see each other, listen to everyone's story. Maybe then we can all sleep a little more soundly at night. <laughs> what do I know? I'm just a mother. <laughs> well, I reckon that's all I have to say for today, but I will be back telling my story again tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day until that raging river of tears falls quiet, whenever that may be. I hope you all have a good rest of your day.